Buenos morning. días. Good morning. So good to How see you. Yeah, I'm so You're excited. You're looking great. You as well. I'm so excited about today. Sí. You're going to show me your your Guadalajara. Right? Exactly. Yeah. From your eyes. Yeah, we I had we had a great plan today. Terrific. So tell me, where where do we start? Well, you know, I was very triggered about uh, how you want to see the life culture of Mexico and how you perceive this, no, essence. So I'm thinking about starting with a market. That's fantastic because, you know, I've been here for, uh, you know, for a couple of weeks now. And I was thinking, you know, there's something that I, I, I sense there's a living culture here. See. Si. And, you know, I knew you would say the market because si. that's, that's where I can see the sights and sounds and smell. Exactly. See, sí, exactly. And especially, especially because we're starting in the morning, no? so I think it's a good start to see the market and how everything the day develops through. Okay, fantastic. All right, so let's go. Okay, great. Okay, Feli, so this is Mercado Alcalde. This uh -huh. is one of my favorite markets in the city. Yeah because I really enjoy that I live nearby and can, I can come walking, no? Mm -hmm. So this is uh, very practical for me. Mm -hmm. uh, also, it has like a personal history because uh, my family mm -hmm. used to come here for grocery, no? So when yeah. the city was a bit smaller and it was more accessible, it was very easy to come here and yeah. do the grocery shopping. Okay, so, uh, you know, what well, I'm impressed. Uh, these are mostly um, locally produced. See? So you don't have any imports, you consume all that you produce and you, in fact, you export them. See, most of the, of the fruits we find in the market, they are locally produced yeah. and around the area. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's terrific. Okay, let's go inside. So we will see how uh, all the stalls are different arranged, no? Uh-huh. So we have like the dried fruit stuff. Oh, Jamaica. I see you guys drink Jamaica a lot. Exactly. That's a flower. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's a, a, a red flower. Yeah. yeah. And we make water, fresh water out of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's very popular for, especially in the heat, no? Wow, bro. Look at this. Tell me, what are these? Okay. These are different cheeses from the region. Uh-huh. So we have adobera, which is a melting cheese. Uh -huh. It's good for making quesadillas. Mm -hmm. Then this is panela, it's a fresh, fresh cheese. And then this is cotija. This is a, like a, a common cheese to have around the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So you can use it for different food or you can just like go and chop. And, and for your have a cheese snack. quesadilla, right? Si. <laughs> okay. We're in the fruit section and we have the lima here, which okay. is a citric from Mexico. This is amazing. Now, si. I, now I can see that the lima has this little bump. So exactly. I can it's about the bump. Dis distinguish it between the other lemon. citrics. Yeah. Exactly. And this is an, do you have like a, a dish called sopa de lima? This is from this, right? Sopa de lima is from Merida. Exactly. Guayaba. Guayaba. They're tiny. See, sí, and guayaba is also endemic from Mexico, no? Oh, yeah. it's amazing. Oh, this is important. Tell me, what are these and this? This is zapote and this is chico zapote. Chico zapote? See, sí, this is very sweet. This is, this is... Beautiful in, color. Yeah. In Indonesia, uh -huh. it's similar to sawo, but this is not sawo, but it's similar. Right? Si. Sí. Chico zapote. Chico zapote. Chico zapote, that's amazing. And, and this, of course, this is the ubi or the sweet potato. Oh, the sweet potato, camote. Gorgeous. Tell me, what are these small? This is tomate. This grows also in the milpa with yeah. chile and corn. Uh -huh. And this is just for making sauce, yeah. the green sauce. Do you want yeah. it? Do you have with chilaquiles? Oh, yeah, the green sauce. Exactly. The salsa verde. See, sí. and this has to be cooked. You cannot eat it raw. Vente, Feli. Look at the vegetables, they're all organic and they're all locally produced, right? They're all locally produced, exactly. Look at all the fresh juices. Those are all the fresh juices. And you see, we have eggs of different. We have duck. Duck. We have chicken. Chicken. And codorniz. I found the chili section. Yeah, it's great. All the type of chili. These are the dried chili, no? So in Mexico, Mexico cuisine, 
we will treat chili fresh or dried. And yeah. it has different properties depending on the state of the chili. Mm. So some chilies are for giving color, mm -hmm. some are for giving flavor, and some are for actually giving yeah. spice to the food. Yeah. And something very interesting about this style is also has the beans, oh. which beans and chili grow together yes. in La Milpa. It's very nice how they are in a dialogue. And then we have breakfast styles, no? So people have breakfast here? Breakfast exactly. available? Ooh, wow, look at that. Then making gorditas and quesadillas. Mexicans love their sauces. See, sauce is very important, no? And there is different type of salsas depending on... Look at, look at the salsa. On the type of food. So you're going to find red salsa. Then you have the Mexican salsa, which is the tomato, chile, cilantro chopped. We have green salsas. Wow, this, look at this. This is your famous corn. This is life. This is life, exactly. This is culture. This is called, this is your, now I get to see your living culture. Wow, it's amazing. Voy a querer cuatro piezas de lote, por favor. ¿Es de dónde viene? Este viene del estado de Sonora. O sea, ¿ustedes trabajan con maíz de diferentes estados? Sí, ¿O siempre de Sonora? No, no, no siempre es diferente. ¿Por, por, por la temporada ejemplo, del año? Exacto. Ok. Ah, ¿Y el de Jalisco de qué fecha es? Pues hay dos. Ah, hay dos temporadas. Y aquí, aquí es en julio. Órale. Oh, y hay otra que es para a la costa, que ya en un, un mes estamos en la costa. Ah, órale. Es una verdadera preciosidad de elote tiernito. Sí, yeah, sí. Se usa todo, ¿eh? Todo. Qué riqueza. So we're reaching the, the panadería, which is the, the bread store. And we're going to find the different oh. type of breads local from Guadalajara. Buenos días. Buenos días. This is birote. It's actually a bread made by fermented dough, no? So it's special from Guadalajara because it has to do a lot with the altitude of the city uh -huh. and how the fermentation process takes place. Okay. And this is the bread where like the famous torta ahogada is made with, no? Yeah, yeah. We have birote and we have a pan salado. Okay. The pan salado, pan salado, it has like a, a, a rougher crust. Mm -hmm. This is pan dulce, wow. so we have concha. Concha? Uh -huh. Concha, donas. Mm -hmm. Este niño envuelto. Niño envuelto. Okay. Con Ah, ya. Tiene crema pastelera. Ah, ese está relleno. de filled with, with bakery cream. Tell me, uh, Ro, we're going to invite some friends tonight? Sí, sí. Shall we get some? I think we should get some. Definitely. Great, great. great. Let's, let's buy some. Okay. Hola, mi nombre es Raúl Rueda, soy asistente curatorial del Museo Cabañas y soy curador de la exposición La Nefasta Influencia Aún, cartas entre Pedro Friedeberg y Matías Geritz. Nosotros en el Museo Cabañas tenemos el acervo completo de Matías Geritz, toda su correspondencia. Él intercambió más de 2.000 cartas con agentes alrededor de todo el mundo. Entonces, entre estos conjuntos, hay conjuntos que son más grandes, que eran como las personas más cercanas a él, y entre ellas están las de Pedro Friedeberg. Geritz y y Friedeberg se conocen en los años 60 y la primera colaboración artística que tiene entre los dos es en la exposición de los hartos. Esta exposición es una broma que Geritz hace como el mundo del arte, ¿no? burlándose de todos. Una de las características de esto es que Geritz invita a personas y a todas les agrega una H, ¿no? como estaba el ilustrador y le pone una H, el arquitecto y le pone una H hacia todo. Entonces es una conversación que se va a quedar entre ellos todo el tiempo y cuando se están intercambiando las cartas siempre están utilizando la H como un motivo de burla ¿no? del mundo del arte y le llamamos la nefasta influencia porque Friedeberg todo el tiempo se está burlando de Geritz y cuando ve una escultura abstracta horrible de esas que suele haber muchas por el país le dice mira hasta acá ha llegado tu nefasta influencia entonces lo, lo que vemos aquí son el inicio de la conversación entre ellos dos estas son cartas que se intercambiaron entre 1960 y 1970 aproximadamente las cartas tienen una riqueza en diferentes planos el primero es el plano visual y ya después en el contenido 
son cartas muy interesantes porque hablan de cuestiones públicas, agentes públicos del arte en México. ¿no? Además, y es como la cosa que más me gusta, y es que son muy divertidas. Welcome to Luis Oficina. We're trying to look uh, emerging artists that has no representative like in other galleries. Mm -hmm. They're working in, in their apartments or like in their own. So we're trying to show his their art from that's the idea of the gallery, yeah. So I understand that kind of uh, Luis Gallery uh, is born because of a lack of uh, of places that the artists could participate, no? Yeah. So it's actually like, a, it's a need of the artistic scene for, for Luis Galera yeah. to present itself. Yeah, I think it's something that wasn't happening here in Guadalajara. Uh -huh. So my partner and I tried to do that, to, to give that space to, for, for those artists. So artists who don't have representation, they, they just know that Louis Gallery is, is, is available. Yeah. This space in specific, we, we got it to create it like for more like a studio. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So they can work here. Ah, oh, okay. And they... So a studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Here in this studio, we have two of Guadalajara. One is Juan Diego Covarrubias, mm -hmm. and the other one is Leonardo Asensio. Uh, Javier Fresneda, he's from Madrid, but he's living here in Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. Edgar Cobian is also from Guadalajara. Uh, my partner is from Mexico City, so, well, from different parts of okay. Mexico. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. started like uh, seven years ago with this project. Uh, my origins are from the contemporary art world. I came from Mexico City just to open uh, this project in Guadalajara because I was a little bit tired of the city. I was also tired of the, um, of the art world, of the frivolity of the art world. So I decided to do something that deals with my own work but not producing objects. No? And that was a little bit the idea of the bookstore at the beginning. These are books that you're passionate about. And I, if I just browse quickly, and the, and the topics, the themes are just so varied. I thought when I moved here that I had a lot of books. When I put them in the house, there were not so much as I thought. So I decided to invite a small printing house, well, not, not so small printing house, mm -hmm. uh, to be in the bookstore, and I have mixed uh, new and used books. But my, my idea was that it needed to be a specialized bookstore in uh, yes. like a 20, 20th century uh, Hispano-American uh, writers, mm -hmm. uh, collectible ones also, first printings, first edition, things like that. Ah. But it was impossible to maintain that, and also the people who collected books in Guadalajara, it's a very, very small amount. I've been spending like 20 years of collecting books, so I have m mines, but when I found uh, like in an old bookstore in, in yeah. Mexico City or in, oh in another state, 
and it's not so expensive. I buy it for the, for like the bookstore. Just like you find this by chance, right? By, very, and by it chance. doesn't happen anymore because of the internet, so everybody is like uh, uh -huh. Googling uh, the books that he found. So yes. it's very difficult uh -huh. now to have this chance. There are like uh, two very different ways to buy, but also to read. If I want a book and I, I want to really right now to read it, I won't spend uh, like two weeks trying to find it. Yeah. I download it and I read it. No, I don't think we have reached the point that uh, one is better than the other. Right. It's obvious that the printed book will disappear at some point. Uh, you think? We still need paper. No, it's it's, it's complicated, but it's not. Uh, we are not so close to that point yet. No. And also, Elegante Vagancia is a place that houses other artistic projects, no? Yeah, uh, we've been doing this. Uh, we did it a lot uh, in the first in the first years. Uh -huh. Now I'm doing in another way. It's people that has some things that uh, deals with books. I invite them to present it uh, here in a in a way that is, could be strange for the art world but also for the uh, literature world. But everybody has a story to tell. Everybody. <laughs> but the thing is ha how you tell in a, in a permanent format, yeah. a book, uh, yeah. a painting, a sculpture, whatever, no? Yeah. Or that's one of the things I discover with the bookstore I'm having last mm -hmm. my studio, mm -hmm. is that maybe I want to become a rumor. A rumor, not something that is in the air, that is getting each time less and less uh, yeah. noisy yeah. and it will disappear in a couple of years, no? Yes. And the place is amazing, it's a uh, Barragan's house, yes. probably one of his first constructions from the end of the 20s. We moved here uh, almost two years ago and uh, we became uh, a serious bookstore. <laughs> solid basement mm -hmm. that makes sense to the other process. Uh, we represent artists like Enrique Hernandez, Isa Carrillo, that is the one that you saw her yes. show of the mm -hmm. numbers, the photographs yes. of the numbers. And Enrique Hernandez is an, another amazing painter from Guadalajara who works from the image and the, the construction of the image. So that, that's the base of Mexican represented artists and how we work with the program at, at this point from some years from now. We work very close with an international curator called Omar Lopez Shawit. He's based between Miami and New York. He had a tremendous trajectory. He used to be the director of Art of Madrid, Ontario, Miami, private collector museums, and he helped me in the way to introduce it to some artists. Among that is all the collaborations, like you saw the Ukrainian show from these four Ukrainian artists. And also it's like um, the other artists has been coming to the gallery from Israel, mm -hmm. for example, Cuba. Mm -hmm. And we are in talks for artists from Salvador. So those two projects based mainly will be to have more international artists coming to Guadalajara. 